because you're joining an established cluster. Um, if you recall, the service accounts were a little bit different looking in the first node. Whoops. This is just the same administrative password in every one of these positions. We're not sending error reports. We're not really concerned about it. It's not a, a real production setup. Did another rule check. Go ahead and install. And again, this is the slow part of the install, and I'll pick it up when it's done. Alrighty then, looks like the SQL install on node 2 is complete. Let's close it up. And what I want to do is go to node 1, clear the screen, okay we've got failover, cluster manager, check it out folks, we've got node 1 and node 2 with our very nicely um, one node is all in uppercase and the other node is not. Oh well. A plus DTC is offline. Interesting. Well, let me restart this and see if it comes up just fine actually. It says that this has failed, failed. What I am going to do is shut down the cluster. Yes. What I'm going to do is completely reboot all of this and just see what happens. I'm just going to reboot all of these and see what's what. And I'll pause this until I return. Alright, so I've rebooted everything and all the nodes are up and the cluster is also up. This is the failover cluster manager in interface and if you click through it, if you expand all the subcategories here, you look at A plus is up. There are some warnings here, I'll discuss that in a moment the services and applications section. You've got the A plus plus DTC and the SQL server itself. Both of those major services are up and online. A plus plus DTC is online. Ignore this for now. And MS SQL online. If you click through the nodes both node 1 and node 2 are up. You can look at the individual nodes to see what service is running. In this case, node 1 is hosting the database engine itself. Node 2 is hosting the distribution coordinator. Storage. These are all our disks. Every one of our virtual disks is online. These are all SCSI drives. And in reality, 
in an enterprise environment, you're probably going to be connected to a SAN, a storage area network, and this would probably, like in the case of Amazon.com, be an absolutely massively huge data warehouse. We have our two networks. The public one is the um, dot fifty nine dot one twenty nine including one thirty and one thirty one IP addresses and this is the private network with the ten dot one dot one network. Everything is up. Okay, there are two things I'm going to show you <coughs> related to just general server maintenance. Um, we want to set the passwords just for our convenience here to be permanent and never changing, so we're going to open Active Directory Users and Computers. And the way you change the duration or any other category of passwords or of any member, right click on the user, go to Properties. Under Account, you will find some attributes here we can check off password never expires and that's how you get your uh, domain users password to never require change <clears throat> the other thing very quickly when you start and stop a cluster very often you'll pick up errors just because it takes time for various hard drives to spin up various ser services to communicate over a network like if like in this case <coughs> the current owner of these two separate um, excuse me a moment the um, current owners of both of these services are on node 1 and node 2 and sometimes it takes a few seconds for various services to communicate properly so you get errors you get errors naturally when you start and stop a system all kinds of goofy little errors and they're not really necessarily significant so I'm going to show you how to get rid of those errors and um, there's something built into Windows called an event viewer that you use to analyze log files and if you invoke the event viewer you can then uh, open up those log files and clear them from errors go under Windows Logs, Application, highlight it, right click, Clear Log, Clear Security, Clear Log, you can go through and clear all these. These are all different categories of log file. The Setup, <coughs> Clear Log, this is where the majority of your that warning and error information comes from but you have to clear it on both nodes go into event viewer here and clear these logs and when you restart or excuse me boy my voice is a mess when you restart the cluster manager um, all of those errors should be gone. Those warnings. Clear log. And then I'm curious to reboot the entire cluster and just see how cleanly it does start and stop. Once in a while you get systems that very cleanly start and stop very nicely. Like right now, the cluster is up and running and when I re-invoke the uh, cluster manager. Like if I had not shut down the cluster manager when I cleared those warnings I'd go into it and it would still show the warnings. So I s stopped it and I'm now restarting it. Sh see there should be no warnings here. Recent cluster events. Nothing happening here. Move along. Okay, what this is telling me is it's operating. If you click through everything, 
you see the services and applications are all online, there are no warnings. The nodes, both up, no warnings. Networks, storage, all is up, no warnings. No warnings, okay. Mm, if you need, if you make a mistake when you're configuring, you have to destroy the cluster from within the cluster, and you do that by right-clicking on the cluster itself, going to More Actions, and Destroy Cluster. This wipes it out. You still have to go into the Domain Controller afterwards, and um, delete the cluster itself out of the Active Directory, like under Computers. You've got to delete A++, A++, DTC, and Cluster 555. If you want to reuse those names, again, you have to delete them. You don't have to delete them. I just do. And the interesting thing is, the cluster has to be up and running before you get the option to destroy it. You can migrate services and applications, like um, the services and applications are on different nodes, like we can take the database, right click, and choose move this to another node, move to node 2. Move it to 2? Yes. And you see it says pending. It'll take 30 seconds or a minute for it to move the service. And then they'll both be listed as on node 2. There it is. It's on node 2. It's bringing the service up on node 2. And now if we click on node 1, there is nothing there. And if we go to node 2, both of the services are there. It is taking a moment for MSSQL server to come up. Hopefully it won't throw errors. Let's go to the cluster. No, nope, no errors. Now what I'm curious to do, I want to shut it down. <coughs> I want to shut down the cluster. When I go to... to um, start and stop the machines like this. I'll, I'll shut the cluster down first and then shut down the nodes, then shut down the uh, the domain controller. And of course you can't just go in like on a node and install another disk without it having an effect on uh, the cluster itself sometimes. Depends on what you do. You have to think about what you're doing with the cluster, is all I'm saying. Okay, it says down. I'm going to bring it back up. Start cluster service. And see if it comes up clean. Waiting for the cluster to achieve quorum. Two out of two nodes are running. Both of the services should come up on just one node, though. Okay, let's expand it and see how many errors we picked up. Here we go. Click. One critical error, it says. What is it? <coughs> it says... The cluster service is shutting down because Quorum was lost. This could be due to loss of network connectivity. That was during the last few moments of the shutdown. It just didn't communicate cleanly as it shut down somehow. So, again, you can go into the event viewer and clear all the warnings out, and there would be no warning here at all. It, it came up without any kind of a warning whatsoever. The services are on node 1 or 2. You can right-click and go to Properties and you can choose to have a preferred node run a specific service. And there are various other qualities that you can invoke also. Maximum failures in the specified period. A period is how long? Six hours. Specify the number of times the cluster service will attempt to restart or fail over the service or application in a specified time period. All kinds of cool stuff to get familiar with here.